Welcome back to The Real Story Channel. Many years ago, there existed a small fishing village situated by a great river. The inhabitants were simple folk who relied on the river's fish and their cultivated crops for sustenance. During that era, fishing was highly prosperous as the river was wide, deep, and teeming with abundant large fish. Among the villagers, there was a fisherman named Musa who possessed remarkable skills. Every morning, at the break of dawn, Musa would set out in his canoe, gliding along the shore in search of the most favorable fishing spot for the day. Musa held the reputation of being the finest fisherman in the village, consistently returning with a more plentiful catch than anyone else. One morning, as Musa paddled near the shore, he noticed unusual ripples in the water beneath a large tree that extended over the river. Intrigued, he approached the area to investigate the cause of the disturbance. To his astonishment, nestled amidst the tree's long roots, he spotted the most peculiar creature he had ever encountered. At first glance, Musa wondered if it might be a baby hippopotamus, but upon closer inspection, he realized it bore no resemblance to any hippo he had seen before. This creature possessed rough black skin and a large round body, nearly as sizable as Musa's canoe. Its head was peculiarly shaped, adorned with spiny fins protruding from the top and bottom. With its eyes closed, the creature appeared to be peacefully drifting along with the current, gently nudging against the tree roots. Musa experienced a mixture of fear and curiosity. He had never witnessed such a creature in the river before. Proceeding cautiously, he paddled closer to obtain a better view. When he was within arm's reach, Musa extended his paddle and gave the creature a gentle nudge. Instantly, its eyes sprung open, revealing bright green orbs the size of mangoes. Musa cried out in fright, but to his surprise, the creature exhibited no aggression. It merely floated there, flay, blinking at Musa with its large green eyes. Gradually, Musa's fear subsided, as he realized that the creature was relatively small, likely a baby, and showed no signs of hostility. A thought crossed Musa's mind, and he chuckled. He conceived an idea that the peculiar creature could serve as an exceptional gift for the chief's grand dinner. Surely, the chief would reward Musa generously for such a unique catch. Seizing the opportunity before the creature could drift away, Musa retrieved his fishing net from the bottom of the canoe and skillfully cast it over the creature, ensnaring it against the tree roots. Although it wriggled and struggled, the creature soon became entangled tightly within the net. Musa hauled the net, along with the floundering creature resembling a large, leathery bag, into his canoe. Efficiently securing the net's opening, Musa ensured that his catch could not escape. Satisfied with his success, Musa swiftly paddled back to the village, eager to present the peculiar river creature to the chief. As Musa brought his canoe ashore, a crowd quickly gathered. Nobody had ever witnessed anything like the creature Musa had captured that morning. It bumped and squirmed within the net as Musa carried it toward the chief's hut, emitting peculiar wobbling cries that bore resemblance to a human baby's plaintive weeping. The chief emerged and inspected Musa's catch, displaying the same astonishment as everyone else. Well done, Musa, praised the chief. You have captured something truly extraordinary today. We shall hold a feast in your honor tonight. This creature appears to be tender and delectable. The chief's cooks took charge of the creature, preparing it for the grand feast that awaited that evening. Throughout the day, the villagers congratulated Musa on his astonishing catch. As the sun descended, the entire community gathered around large fires situated just outside the village. Musa's peculiar creature was adorned with herbs, stuffed, roasted on a spit, and presented as the centerpiece of the feast. The meat appeared enticing and savory, captivating the attendees. However, just as the chief was about to take the initial bite, a thunderous roar reverberated across the river, so powerful that it shook leaves from the trees. Fear gripped everyone, causing even the chief to drop his food. The deafening roar echoed once more, followed by additional roars that bore an uncanny resemblance to speech. Suddenly, the ground trembled, prompting the terrified villagers to question the origins of this malevolent sorcery. Panic ensued as three colossal creatures emerged from the river. Their bodies towered over the village's coconut trees, water cascading off their forms. The monsters made their way onto the shore, charging toward the fires. 
Their red and black scales glistened in the firelight, adorned with spiny fins and ridges along their heads and backs. Yellow fangs, longer than a man's arm, jutted from their massive jaws. Their small, fiery red eyes burned with rage, fixated upon Musa's catch, which continued to roast above the flames. With a roar that shattered eardrums, the largest monster swiped a colossal, clawed hand toward the feast, scattering people aside as if they were mere ants. Two huts were demolished in its wake. Seizing the roasted carcass that had once been Musa's catch, the monster devoured it in one swift motion, spit and all, its monstrous teeth effortlessly reducing the unfortunate creature to nothing. Lowering its head menacingly close to the terror-stricken crowd, the beast emitted a deep growling snarl. Musa came to the realization that the creatures he had encountered were not mere beasts, but sentient beings. He had foolishly taken a baby from their midst, and now the monsters sought revenge. In a moment of danger, the chief intervened, offering himself in place of Musa. The monsters hesitated, acknowledging the chief's selflessness and honor. They decided to take him to their underwater city, promising to return him unharmed on the next full moon. The villagers were astonished by this turn of events, while Musa felt overwhelmed by guilt and worry for what he had brought upon them. The following week was filled with anxiety and uncertainty, with arguments arising over whether the monsters would keep their word. Musa's faith in their understanding and reason remained steadfast. Finally, on the night of the full moon, the monsters emerged from the river, with the chief safely seated atop the largest one. The chief revealed that he had learned much during his time below the waters, discovering that the creatures had names, families, and customs, just like the villagers. Musa, filled with remorse, apologized to Lagaros, the lead monster, who forgave him. The chief declared friendship between their peoples, and a celebration ensued, where knowledge and stories were shared. The village thrived under the watchful eye of the sea beasts, and Musa learned the importance of seeking understanding and dispelling ignorance. The village prospered and grew wiser in the presence of their newfound friends, the gentle giants of the deep. Thank you for watching. See you in the next updated videos.